from NBC News. This is Today with Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb. We're back on this Thursday with today's health. To answer the question, does my doctor really need to know that? 28% of us admit to sometimes lying to our doctors. Out of and those of you who aren't are lying, lying about that. <laughs> we do it out of fear or embarrassment or just because it doesn't seem to be that important. But there are consequences to those little white lies. Are there? Yeah. Julie Bain is the health director at Ladies Home Journal. And Dr. Robert Gladder is an emergency medical physician. Of course, a med yes, yeah. at Atlantic yeah. Hill Hospital. How are you doing? Good. Good. Great. All right. So we do, sometimes, I guess when you go to the doctor, Doctor and you don't tell the whole truth. It's because you don't think my doctor needs to know that sort of thing. I mean, or you don't well, even you may judged. not even realize that it's something they need to know for your health. And you know, you have to get over that embarrassment thing mm -hmm. and or the wanting the doctors of approval. It's got to be a total no embarrassment zone. So they may ask you something like, you know, how many glasses of wine do you drink a week? Or something, and sometimes I guess people would downplay that. Well, you t people do tend to lie about how much they drink, and mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. But doctors know that, so you factor that in. Yeah. <laughs> we, know that. we know that, but you know, we ask patients to be honest with us. Uh, obviously, moderate alcohol consumption is is is, is beneficial, mm -hmm. but obviously, heavy alcohol consumption can lead to serious medical consequences: high blood pressure, diabetes, sometimes breast cancer, Rotten liver, weight yeah. gain, things right. of that nature. I so. think a lot of us are intimidated to to tell our doctors because I, either you feel like you're being judged or. You you just feel uncomfortable. You, you feel like he doesn't need to know I have a cigarette every couple of weeks. Who cares? You know, that kind well, of thing. Well, this is a person you see maybe once a year if you're not yeah. sick. Right? Yeah. That's part of it, too. Yeah. If you're sick, wouldn't you have more incentive to yeah. tell your doctor yeah. everything? If, if you're going right. around and you feel great and you're... you're right. You know but, he, but your doctor needs to be able to assess your risks. And about half of social smokers, people who just smoke over a co when they have a cocktail or something, tend to call themselves non-smokers. So right. the, the doctor might not even realize, but uh, even a few cigarettes can have pretty major Absolutely. Even a puff of a cigarette uh, occasionally can lead to strokes, cardiac disease, hypertension, cancer, things of that nature. I checked yes. into a hotel room last night and, and the room reeked of oh, tobacco. I and that. I just said, I'm sorry, but I cannot stay here. Right. And then that's right. not even secondhand smoke. It's not, it's not, there's no smoke there. It's the Absolutely. smell. Will that damage you at all? Well, actually, the smell itself isn't damaging. It's the chemicals within the smoke that yeah. actually can uh, affect the lung tissue and then yeah. actually starve the tissue of oxygen. So absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, so what about if they ask you about other medicines that you, you've been prescribed? And sometimes you think, well, that, they don't need to know about birth control. Who cares about that? And you, you just kind of skip know, over things. when it comes things. to meds, a lot of people are embarrassed to tell their doctor that they maybe ordered something online or right, they're taking right. something that's going to, like, make you more potent and powerful yeah. or, you know, the, some, some weight the loss stuff. Some weight loss stuff. Yeah. And the doctor really needs to know those are drugs. And, of course, the doctor needs to know all your prescription drugs. But Absolutely. anything you take, even vitamins, fish oil, aspirin, can have major interactions. Absolutely. I feel like the best doctors ask a follow-up. When you say, I don't take anything, what about so-and-so? And you yeah, go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that. Like, what are about you taking X? vitamins? Are I, you taking fish oil? Yeah, are you I like taking, when yeah. they do that. Yes, they you sort have to be persistent. You have to really fish out, and you have to actually you know, tell the patient, it's so important you tell me everything, because I can't help you otherwise. I think we overstate how much we exercise when they ask. Uh, yeah. Don't you think that's one of those? <laughs> I'm getting plenty of exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Plenty. Then why are you 25 pounds more <laughs> yeah. overweight exactly. than you were last time? Right. Exactly. But even so, if you haven't gained weight, you, if you're not getting your heart moving, right. Right. you're more at risk. Exactly. You have to sweat. Going to the gym, reading a book, and going to the treadmill is just not beneficial. You have to break a sweat. You've got to get your heart rate up. That is so, so important. Well, you say you watch us every day. Why aren't you out there studying yeah, and right. practicing <laughs> and medicine? Doing surgery. I'll soon, <laughs> soon I will. <laughs> okay. So nice Thank to have you, you both. Thanks a lot. Thank we you very much. So much. Light through my teeth through the whole thing. I know you do. Up next, superheroes and snookies. Oh.